madrugada. Isaac, uh, with all the, the moves you've made lately, what message are you sending to your fan base? So um, taking a step back, just, you know, zooming out before getting into, you know, the exact moves. You know, we uh, obviously th this season has been the season, you know, right? There's been a lot of uh, things from a health standpoint, you know, in particular that haven't gone our way. And, you know, what we're doing is being very intentional about, you know, what we see as a championship window, you know, that has opened and, you know, we care deeply about every single game that we play, and that's going to remain, you know, the rest of the season. I think Taylor and the group are doing a great job focusing on developing the right habits, competing at a high level. I think we saw that again, you know, last night. Um, and, you know, seeing what, you know, what else can we find from, from a roster building, you know, standpoint the rest of the way. But uh, we are, uh, you know, in terms of what we're certainly focused on, and, and I think, uh, you know, I would imagine the fans, uh, you know, care about as well as how, how are we putting the team in a position to go out and, and compete at the highest level, you know, of the NBA next year and beyond, you know, with, with this young core that we have, with Ja, Jaron, Dez, uh, we've been really intrigued by, uh, by Marcus Smart's, you know, fit on court and off court so far. I think he's, uh, you know, been a driver, you know, elevating the group's approach, you know, as well. Um, the emergence of, of Vince Williams, um, Gigi Jackson, you know, excited that, that uh, he's now, you know, with us, you know, definitively multi-year, you know, as well. Uh, we're, we're focused on, we, we believe, uh, you know, have real conviction that with, uh, especially with some of the, the guys who have, you know, kind of broken out recently that this team, you know, there, there's more work to be done. You know, we're looking forward to this offseason and this offseason was definitely a major driver of this trade deadline. How do we put ourselves in a position to be able to have some more flexibility to capitalize on, um, you know, wh whether we're picking 15th, 10th, 7th, 4th, 1st, you know, wh wherever that pick, you know, might land, you know, right this year. We want to be in a position where, you know, we, we have flexibility, whether it's draft or trade, to put this team in a position to go out and really compete, you know, at the highest level in – you know, again, I, I think it's a, a window of contention that, you know, the, the age of our, our key guys kind of beginning to enter their prime. Um, we're excited to, to do everything we can to capitalize on that. Hey, Zach, um, regarding the center position, if, if we can get into that, uh, one with Steven Adams, you know, talking to you earlier this year, it sounded like he was still kind of a piece to your future. Uh, what in particular led to you, you know, making that move in terms of, you know, trading Steven Adams? And then two, how do you address the center position going forward? Like, what are some ways that you're kind of considering uh, addressing that position? Yeah, I mean, on a, on a human level, you know, this is a, a trade deadline where, you know, there's three guys, you know, really, in, in Steven, in Xavier Tillman, and David Roddy, who I think were, you know, drivers you know of the locker room they all brought different things you know in, in their approach but um like truly wonderful individuals who you know are going to be missed and and difficult decisions i think in in each of those cases um you know steven um obviously we we've missed him you know on the court this year as well i think he's gonna be back and i think he's gonna be great i think he's gonna be steven adams you know with houston um you know but for us again really taking a step back and being intentional about we we have this unique opportunity, you know, at this draft. And again, wh wherever that pick might be, you know, we, we want to be in a position where we're able to kind of navigate and steer that in different directions to have optionality. You know, we, uh, we, we certainly have not solved, you know, at this point probably for, I mean, Jaron is certainly one of the, the long-term bigs. And I think there's an open question of, you know, who, who do we pursue, be it by, you know, trade, draft, free agency, you know, what, is there another addition that we look to make uh, to, to optimize Jaron, to optimize our front court, and to generally position the team to be successful? I mean, there's uh, work to be done there, most definitely. Um, the Adams deal, at least for the moment, in terms of projecting into next season, moved you from the quote unquote second apron of the tax down, in, I think, into the first apron area. That, that's territory the team hasn't, the franchise hasn't had to really grapple with for a generation, really. You're going to be grappling with it going into next season. Yep. Do you have certain parameters on where you can be or want to be relative to the luxury tax? 
Yeah, the, there's not a, a budget that we have to operate from. There's not a place that we need to be, you know, by any means relative to, you know, any marker or luxury tax, first apron, second apron, you know, or otherwise. Um, there are, under the new CBA, there's there's basketball, you know, limitations at, at each of those thresholds. And, you know, as we think about, you know, on the court, how do we, how do we assemble, manage, you know, continue to build a roster that, has a chance to compete and continue to compete, you know, at the highest level. Um, those are all things that will have to weigh from a team building standpoint. But uh, we're fortunate, you know. Uh, Robert is a incredible and owner, both financially, um, tactfully. You know, we we are fortunate to be able to operate in a way where uh, we don't have to operate from reaching, you know, a certain end. But it is something, you know, that from a, a basketball team building standpoint, especially under the new CBA, that we have to be mindful of. Correct. Zach, in terms of dealing, Zach, you mentioned Steven gave you guys flexibility, but in terms of dealing both him and X, is any part of that equation you guys feeling strongly about Brandon and his recovery and where that stands, or is that kind of a separate entity? Yeah, no, I, th I think Brandon is a significant part of the big equation, you know, if you will, going forward. Brandon's doing really well in his recovery. Um, I think there's a, you know, we'll, we'll make a determination when we get a little bit closer, but uh, Brandon has not been ruled out, you know, for the season. I think if things, uh, you know, if it's advisable, you know, regardless of record or anything like that, like a little cameo at the end of the season just to build momentum, you know, going into next season. I think that's still something that's potentially on the table for Brandon Clark. And, you know, obviously we've we've missed Brandon, you know, among all of the guys, you know, that we've missed this season. But uh, Brandon historically, you know, has been a, a, an excellent, you know, pairing with Jaron, you know, on the court and others. Um, you know, I, again, I, I think there's additions we're going to gonna look to make to the roster as well. But uh, we do see Brandon as someone who can be a significant part of this group going forward. Um, Zach, so just with, with the moves of Adams and X and just also with the eye tests and data that you've seen with Jaron both at the four and at the five, just how did those moves play into how you see Jaron projecting into playing his full-time minutes in either front court position? Yeah, first off, just credit to Jaron, you know, for a second there. I mean, J Jaron is out there. My God, what, what he has developed into on court, off court, he is still, you know, again, the, the record is where it is right now. But what Jaron is doing, I mean, it, it's it's absolutely incredible and, and could not give more credit to him and his approach and how steady, you know, I think he's been day to day. I think the the beauty, you know, of Jaron's game, um, you know, on both ends of the floor is that, you know, I, there's always this dialogue of, oh, is is Jaron a four or is Jaron a five? I mean, yes, right? Like he's he can be both, right? Like there sometimes when you talk about players, you, you talk about tweeners, and they're they're neither, you know, right? Like that's the problem. They're they're not. There's a there's some major deficiency, you know, at both positions that doesn't allow them to be effective terribly at either. I think, you know, again, kind of the beauty of, of Jaron's skill set and size and, and everything that he brings to the table, we, we've now seen over multiple years with many different big combinations that Jaron can be really effective both as a five, you know, as, as well as uh, as a four with a more, you know, traditional big, probably selling Stephen Adam short, but with a, a big of, of Stephen's ilk, you know, if you will. So um, as we're thinking about, you know, optimizing this team in the play, in the context of playoff basketball, which continues to be the focus. That's very much, you know, when we're thinking about bringing bringing in, retaining all of those things. How, how do we put the team in a position to win? You know, four playoff series in a row. There's different bigs we have to go up against. There's different types of teams we have to you know get through. And I think Jaron's ability to effectively play both the four and the five is part of his. He's playing more five, you know, right now. And I think that's excellent, you know, for him developmentally. Um, he probably played a, a, a little bit more at the four last year, but I think we've seen in the playoffs things, you know, teams trend a little bit more towards small ball, and Jaron being able to be an effective five in that context, I think, is critical. You know, but at the same time, be, being able to be an effective four and play off a, a more traditional big and roam and be disruptive defensively, um, I, I think it's more valuable, you know, than most bigs because he can play both. Zach in the back, signing Gigi to a multi-year deal spoke volumes about how y'all feel about him as a player. What do you think he can add to the franchise moving forward? Yeah, very excited about Gigi's uh, growth, even just over the course of the season. I mean, from when Gigi 
came in pre-draft, you know, the summer league, you know, early, early phase of his time with us, obviously a lot of time with the hustle. We've thrown a lot at him, you know, and from when we first sat down with him, Gigi has proven to be very, very open, very receptive, very coachable. Gigi wants to be great and he wants to be a team player and We've given him a lot of feedback, you know, constructive feedback over the course of the year, and he just keeps soaking it up. You know, I, I don't need to tell you guys about the potential and, the, and more than flashes. This isn't just, oh, he's doing something impressive, you know, here and there. Like, Gigi's stringing it together in a meaningful way that's, you know, it, it, impacting winning basketball, you know, in, in large part. And um, with that, with the frame, you know, that he has, that's a, um, you know, the mold of a wing that we we haven't you know really had you know recently and very excited about uh, he, he has he has more work to do you know most definitely but we believe in him I, I think he's going to keep putting in the work and uh, we're going to do our part certainly to help him realize that potential. Zach, the the medical evaluations and re reevaluations will come when they come, but how essential is it uh, to maybe see some of the veterans on the court with GG and? you know, some of these younger guys at, at some point later this season. And secondly, how much more capital uh, is there in second round picks now that obviously you guys have done a great job of stockpiling those in terms of having that optionality moving forward? Yeah, so on, on the health front, uh, Des and Marcus in particular, I think that's probably who you're, who you're getting at there. They're both doing well. They're, they're attacking their rehab, you know, taking it day to day, but I think they're making good progress. Uh, there's not a set timeline though at this point. Um, in terms of the the draft capital, you know, yeah, th this is, uh, you know, maybe not the most exciting deadline and that there's not, you know, a, a significant, you know, a starting caliber player addition maybe that we've we've added, although we're excited about uh, you to coming back. Well, Mar Stevens is going to join the group as well. Happy to touch on, you know, that also. We uh, we prioritize flexibility and, and, you know, generating some draft assets. We were in a position where, we, we still have all of our firsts with some upside. You know, we had that going in. We've added a little more upside, you know, to one of our firsts. And we, we were down to two seconds. So we now have many. I, off the top of my head, I, I don't even know exactly how many we have now. But we've, we've added several, which as we're getting into this draft, you know, be it trades that we could look at involving, you know, the first round pick, moving up, moving down, moving around, adding a pick and a player. You know, there's a lot of ways we can play it that are now – uh, you know, avenues that I think are, are going to be open to us now that might not otherwise have been, which when we're talking about an asset as significant as what could be, you know, a high-end first-round pick, we're, we're focusing on that. Like, that's that's kind of the driver if there's a, you know, a decision tree, if you will, of, of what comes next. It's, you know, let's see where that pick lands, and then we can decide. We don't want to be – we're not going to be locked into a position, you know, with, with that pick, for example. We want to see where that is what players, you know, stand out, you know, at that point in the draft and what trade possibilities, you know, there are. And then from there, we'll figure out the next steps. That's it's just it's a unique asset for a team that has the talent that we already have to potentially have a pick that that you know is is in that range of the draft. This is tied into that a little bit. I I'm curious you're going to be entering an off season, the first off season where all three of your big stars are going to be under, you know, big contracts. How if at all does you brought up team building earlier? Does the team building philosophy change now that you're entering a phase where you know a large chunk of your cap is going to be taken up by all, by these three guys? Yeah, I mean they're all at a, a more than you know deserved place at this point of, with with where they're at contractually. That that does take up a, a more significant you know chunk you know under under the salary cap rules under under any CBA you know certainly. Uh, I think a lot of the philosophy still applies that we're trying to find guys who might be undervalued, guys who might be under the radar, you know, guys who fit, you know, most importantly at the end of the day that we think could help us, you know, in the context of playoff basketball. Um, we have some more roster spots, you know, going forward as well. That's – or potential roster spots, you know, at least. Um, I think that's something that we have coming out of this deadline that we, we actually haven't had, you know, in some time. And, you know, being intentional with those roster spots to both add, you know, be it experienced players, you know, who we think, um, you know, they might not be at – you know, an enormous, you know, financial commitment, but, you know, are there some guys who on the margins, you know, could fit and could help the group? And at the same time, you know, are there still being able to identify in the draft, you know, in certainly the last couple of years, Gigi Jackson, Vince Williams, like if we can hopefully continue to find guys who can, who can emerge, you know, and, and help us 
we're, we're not going to foreclose, you know, any avenue to adding guys that we think could help. But we're very open-minded at this point and, and um, you know, uh, going to be intentional about the fact that we're – the competitive window is open and we want to, you know, pursue moves that are, are going to give the group the chance to compete, you know, next year and beyond. Zach and right middle in the back. Um, what's the franchise's message right now to – Jake and to Zaire, you know, obviously there's been some struggles. There's been some injuries. Um, you move away from Roddy. You know, so these former number one picks that right now are still struggling to find their, their way with the franchise. As you sit here now, what would be the, your message to those two guys besides, hey, get healthy and get better? Where, where, where do they stand with the two guys? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, the way that we're viewing the rest of the season for, for Jake, for Zaire, and for the rest of the group is, you know, these games are incredibly important, you know, for, for your development, for the group. We're taking them all very seriously. And, and I think there's an opportunity, you know, the rest of the way where even if, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're down several guys and some of them aren't coming back, you know, potentially this season, you know, right? So no delusions about that. But relative to early on in the season, you know, where some of the opportunity came for those guys, I mean, we, we positionally, I'm not sure, you know, like we, we – we had so many wings, you know, on the roster to start the year, and our injuries were to point guard and to big, you know. So a lot of guys were forced to play up out of position, forced to play down, you know, out of position. You know, I think one of the things that we can do the rest of the way, even if, you know, some of the guys at those spots, they're a little bit more, um, you know, they're younger. They're, they're you know, more developmental, you know, projects, you know, if you will. But I think we can probably better surround them, you know, the rest of the way with guys who can – uh, potentially put them in positions to be successful. So we're excited, you know, to see what those guys can make of those opportunities. I think that every, everyone, you know, is going to have opportunities, you know, the rest of the way. Um, so we're, we're excited. Uh, every, you know, we take every single game, you know, that we play seriously. We learn from every single game that we play. Um, I'm excited to see what, you know, what transpires the rest of the way here. Uh, listen, I mean, the, there's a – you know, we're in a spot where we have a, a lot of young players and, you know, we uh, nothing has been ruled out. You know, certainly let, let me say that. I mean, I think there's everyone at the very least has shown, you know, that in stretches there's a lot to be encouraged by, you know, what they bring to the table. And what we're focused on right now is giving those guys opportunities in positions to be successful. And I, I think, you know, wouldn't surprise me if there's uh, some guys who emerge and maybe maybe surprise people. Um, <clears throat> trading Tillman, um, trading Tillman implied the team was not looking to re-sign him in free agency this summer. What does not trading Luke Kennard imply about his team option this summer and the team's approach to his future? Yep. Um, having not touched on X, if I can just uh, digress on that one for a second, talked about Steven at, at length before, but Xavier Tillman, unbelievable part of this group, you know, for four years. Um, driver, again, I think I've used that word before, but someone who really – um, you know, is a, you know, fits our DNA, certainly of, of what we've been about and has, you know, him and his family have poured into, you know, this, this group and what we've been about. So very, very much going to miss X and in, you know, over a shorter, you know, year and a half, David Roddy as well, you know, one of the hardest workers on the team, I think he's going to be successful and we're wishing all those guys, you know, the best, you know, going forward. Um, Luke, you know, is someone that we, we value, you know, Luke has proven, I think, to be, uh, a unique, you know, and, and impactful on-court fit, including in the context of playoff basketball. You know, we go back to that Lakers series, don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but we played really well. You know, when Luke was on the court, we played really well. When Luke and Des were on the court together, um, obviously we hold a, a team option, you know, on Luke going into next season, but Luke is someone uh, that we think is, has been a great fit, you know, so far. And, uh, you know, we it wasn't someone we were like, you know, looking to move. Luke, Luke is someone we feel strongly about uh, as, as part of this group. Um, based on, you know, where you are this season, you know, as you've said, kind of alluded to, uh, do you foresee in any way, you know, especially with Marcus and Dez, your record kind of playing a role uh, potentially in their availability later this season? No, uh, the, the record, you know, that never plays a role in, in availability. I think we – We'll, we'll be smart. You know, we're, we want to make sure that our guys are going to be in a position to, you know, be fully healthy. And obviously we want the group to be able to, you know, uh, hit the ground running next season. But uh, we're, we'll take those a day at a time, a week at a time. We'll be smart with the decisions, but their decisions won't be made based on the record. 
Thanks, everyone.